Hello, welcome to Functional Justin video 9. Um, I'm going to be talking about monad transformers in this one. We're going to uh, talk about um, what monad transformers are and um, we're going to look at a specific example of a monad transformer, the writer T. Uh, I'm going to give you a, a couple of caveats about using monad transformers. Um, they're not always plain sailing in Scala and the, the only reason I'm really talking about them is that this kind of um, they solve a problem that is solved in better ways but this is kind of the basis for how all of the other solutions are built um, so yeah well let's do it anyway we're going to build the code in Scala 3 to implement write a T um, to write a program that uses a monad transformer and uh, let's see how we get on so first of all your starting point is uh, let's say you have a program that handles errors you, uh, you're going to use the either monad and if you go back to one of my earlier videos I'm talking about the expression evaluator program and it uses either as the data type um, so that we can handle errors and then you might have a program that logs its progress so each step of the program you want to um, have a log of what it's doing maybe for debugging purposes or for auditing purposes or maybe you actually have part of your calculation is um, an accumulated list of values. So to do that you could use the writer data type uh, which has a monad implementation and writer uh, lets you store a computation that has a list of log values so it's sort of the current log value and all of the previous ones and it has the capability for you to append to that log as you're, as you're programming. So let's say you have a program that logs progress and has errors um, in our eval expression program what we're going to get to in the next video is to currently it uses either for error handling we're going to add the writer t monad so that it can have logging as well as uh, error handling so the question is how do you combine the capabilities of two monads what we want to do is use writer and either together so that's sort of our starting point that's where our monad transformers come in um, a monad transformer is a sort of wrapper so the writer t transformer is going to wrap another another monadic data type and um, it's going to both be a monad itself and it's going to expose the um, inner monad of the, uh, of, the, of the monad that it's wrapping so in this case writer t is the transformer so some warnings about monad transformers they may be slow because the essence of monad transformers is wrapping things so in in, um, in Scala on the JVM um, you don't want to be creating lots of objects um, transformers by their very nature involve wrapping objects up creating new objects so that may be a source of slowdown um, as always you've got to profile your code and see if it is going to be an issue uh, in many cases probably not they can require excessive type annotations so you need to help the compiler quite a bit uh, when using monad transformers and at the end of the video I'll show a couple of examples of um, how much annotation you need and even run into some problem with the type error in Scala 3 that we'll uh, talk about. And they don't scale well to multiple effects so if you have um, an either wrapped with a writer T maybe you're going to also add some state so you need the state transformer. You can't just keep adding monads because at some point you're going to compound the uh, performance difficulties and you're going to make the code hard to read and, and uh, hard to reason about. So that's the introduction and now we'll do the actual coding portion. So the ultimate aim is to take this uh, program that we've been working on throughout the video series and you can see that the, um, the type we're working with here is an either which means that we wrote this program to evaluate expressions um, using the either data type as its return type and we also wrap that with numeric right so numeric is the type class that represents numbers of different kinds and then either is the um, data type that represents error handling so we can write our program in terms of the either data type so remember that our program consists of essentially this program this um, evaluation function um, that takes a expression and it's going to evaluate it using this type with env 
and with env is a context function, which means it's a function that has some kind of environment. In our case, it's the symbol table. You need to go back to uh, one of the first videos to, to follow this bit, but it's really not important for the monad transformer part of it. And then we've got this data type called either, right? So the ultimate aim here is to use the monad transformer method to change this either into a writer T either. So in other words, it's a program that can handle errors using the either data type, but it uses the uh, writer T to also be a program that logs what it's doing as it goes along. So there's a lot of moving parts here, so we're gonna build it up gradually, and it'll probably take two videos to really get to the uh, to, to get this done. But the important part in, in this part is just to really understand what a monad transformer is and how to implement it using the features of Scala 3. So a few things we're going to need. Um, if, you, if you're following along in the source code repository that I'll make available with the video, um, we already have various parts. So we've got a monad, uh, we've got an implementation of a monad. So this implements the pure and flat map functions. Um, we've also got monoids, which was the subject of the last video, video 8. Um, monoids are going to be useful because uh, the actual log that we use inside a writer is going to be of type monoid, right? So we're going to be using monad, we're going to be using monoid. Great. So what we're going to do is uh, start on a, on a fresh piece of code. Uh, we're going to make sure we import those classes that we need, so essentially the monad and the monoid. And then we can go ahead and implement a uh, writer T transformer. And then we can use it on a simple example. And then probably in the next video, we'll go to a more complex example, which will be to use it in the eval expression code. Alright, so let's start by importing the types. So we're going to import the monad type. So that would be. Uh, data type classes, monad, and I'm going to import the, the uh, all of the givens. Remember that givens means the implicit instances, and um, then I'm going to re import all of the other symbols as well. The next thing we need is the uh, monoid type class. So we'll just do exactly the same thing. We'll bring everything in. All right, so now we can just run that to make sure everything's okay. And you should print the test at the bottom here. Great, all right. So the next thing we need is an actual writer T data type. So um, this is gonna be essentially our wrapper. It's gonna wrap other monads. And um, this is how we build up a monad transformer. So we start, we're gonna make a case class. We call it writer T. Um, and it's going to have some um, types involved. So first of all, we're going to have a type F, which is just has to be a higher kinded type. Um, so that's the type of the monad that we're going to wrap. And then we have um, W. This is the type of the log, right? So whatever this is, this is what we're going to accumulate over the computations. And then finally, like all data types, we use we have a return value so this is sort of the result of the computation if the computation is succeeding there's going to be a value a inside of it all right so remember that the essence of a monad transformer is that it's a wrapper right so what we're going to create is um, a parameter to this which is just going to be a wrapped monad and this is going to have type f and then Rather than A, we're going to have a tuple of W and A. Okay, so just to understand what's going on here, our writer T transformer is going to transform an inner monad of type F, and that is going to deal with computations that both have a return value and also a log. Right, so these two things are together, and you can see that they're sort of inside the wrapped monad. So for our next step, let's think about how we're going to create one of these. So um, our use case would be something like this. Let's say we have a computation that deals with errors. So we're going to have an either of some type. So let's say we've got an either that's going to be either with a string error and it returns an integer 
and it's just going to be set to write 10. Okay. So that's an example of an IDA. Now, what we would want to do is to be able to take our code that deals with IDAs and somehow lift that into being a writer, right? So what we can do is we can write a lift function, which is responsible for lifting any monad into the writer T. Um, so in the companion object, we can put that there. And we're just going to call it lift. Now, if you look in Scala Z and cats, I think you'll find this is called lift F and lift M, something like that, um, to differentiate it between different types of lifting. But just to avoid complexity, we're just going to implement lift. And um, this is going to have a type parameter F, which is obviously our monad. It's going to have a W, it's going to have an A. And it's going to take um, the monad that we're going to lift and that's going to type have type FA. Um, and then we're going to need a bunch of um, implicits to use. So we use the using keyword to specify that. So remember that the log is going to be monoidal. So we need a monoid of type F monoid for the log. And then the next thing we need is a functor. And we'll see why we need functor in a moment. So let's make a functor of type F. And what this is going to return is a writer T of type FWA. All right, uh, I just need to import functor as well. And we can actually be a bit more um, uh, sorry, just ignore me. We don't need to be a bit more anything, but um, we do need to pull in functor. All right, so the implementation of lift is to construct a writer t and inside we need some wrapped thing right so what that thing is going to be is essentially we could just put the monad in there right but this doesn't have the right type because the monad that we're passing in only has the type fa but we need um f a um f and a tuple of w and a right so remember that to modify what is inside a monad right what's inside a data type you need the map function and um you take the map function, uh, you give it a pure function, and it lets you modify the thing that's inside the, the data type. right? So what we're going to do is take our functor, uh, we're going to call a map function on it, and we're going to pass the parameter fa. And what that gives us is an a. And then what we're going to return is the, um, the log and the value a. So the log is going to be actually m0. I'll explain in a moment, and then the value is a. So what's m0? Well, remember last week we were talking about monoids. The thing about a monoid is it lets you take any data type that has a monoid instance, and you can summon a empty value or an identity value for that type using the zero command, right? And also we can use combine. So the reason we use monoid for our log is it gives us the ability to summon a instance of that type that's empty. Right, which is what we need here because we're taking some um, some monad of any type, and we're we're going to promote that to the writer t, and in doing so, we need to be able to say you don't have any log yet, you just have this empty log, right? But we don't know anything about the log type w except that we know how to get an empty one, right? So that's why uh, monoids are a powerful abstraction and uh, really useful in this case, right? So now we can create a writer t. Uh, what we can do is make our first writer t, and we'll just say that it's equal to uh, writer t, and then we lift e1, and um, there we go. Okay, now one thing you might find uh, in when using Scala 3, um, when using monad transformers, is that the type inference is a little bit much for Scala. So that's why we've got this. Uh, error message here, we, it really doesn't know what we're trying to do. So you can see that the type parameters here for lift are f, w, and a. So to make this work, we're going to have to tell it um, that the um, that the type of the monad is either, and the type of the log is, um, uh, oh, well, we didn't, def we didn't decide that yet. Um, so let's say the type of the log is going to be a list of strings. And then finally, the return value is going to be an int. Okay. So now we're getting further, 
And the next problem is that our monad here needs one type hole, not two, right? So what we need to do is further specialize this and say that the error, um, sorry, the left hand side of the either is string, and the right hand side is um, something that we will decide later. So we'll just call that a one, and we're going to use the new type lander syntax to do that. All right. So it's a bit messy to use, but we've created our first instance of a writer. Now, it's not much use to just have instances. We also need to be able to use them. Now, remember that um, our goal here is that writer T should be a monad itself. Um, we want to use, we want to be able to use it to to um, write programs, right? Just like we can use flat map, map and pure with either. We need to be able to do the same thing with writer T's. So um, what we really want is a instance of monad so that we can use writer T as a, as a fully fledged monad. Um, so let's start implementing that. We're going to uh, use the given keyword to create um, an instance, and then we're going to call this the writer uh, transformer monad. We could call it whatever we want, but that's good enough. This is going to be specialized on a type F, which is a high kind of type. And we can put some constraints in here. Uh, so F needs to be a monad. And then we also need a type W, which is a monoid. So anything that we do with this monad needs to know that F is a monad, W is a monoid, right? So remember that W is the type of the log. And um, so it's going to be an instance of monad. And we're going to have to provide it with some type parameters. So first of all, we're going to have, um, it's going to be a writer T. Um, we need the, the monad type that we wrap. We need the log type, and we need the type of the computation. Now remember that what we want to provide here is monad must be a thing that takes one type parameter, and that type parameter is x. So we've got to use the type lambda um, mechanism that you saw in a previous video, um, and that should work. And that should give us enough type inference for us to be able to create a monad instance from any writer t. All right, so how do we make a monad? Well, we need a pure function, first of all. So the pure function takes any pure value of type A, and we need to be able to create a writer T of that wraps a monad of type F with, with, that, um, with that type. All right, so the input to this is going to be um, it's going to be a type A, and and the output will be a writer T uh, of type F W A. And what does the code look like? What we need to do is take a writer T, and then get the monad of type F, and call pure on that. So what we're doing here is we're taking the pure value a, and we can wrap it using pure so that it's a monad of type f, and then wrap it again using the writer t constructor. But in fact, what we need is to lift this this um, is to lift this central monad into writer t. Right. So instead of using the writer t constructor, we can use lift, which you'll remember um, that we implemented here. Uh, takes care of making sure that the initial log is empty, right? So this is what we need to create a writer T given some pure value. Um, the next thing we need is flat map, of course. So flat map is going to be an extension method, right? So we're, we're going to call pure um, by explicitly creating a writer T, but we'll we want to be able to call flat map on instances of writer, right? So it's going to be an extension method. And also, we defined it that way in the monad type. So we're going to make an extension. It's going to have two two type parameters, an A and a B, for the uh, input and output pure values. And the extension method is going to be on our monad of, of type writer T. So we need FWA. 
and then we can just go ahead and define flat map. So flat map takes a function that maps an A to a write a T type FWA. Um, sorry, FWB, I believe. Yeah. And yeah, that should do it. I should probably explicitly write that return type, which is write a T FWB. So when you write a monad transformer, what you're doing is wrapping the original monad. So we've got to write the flat map that takes care of calling the inner monad's flat map and then handling it on, on the outside. All right, so let's, let's do that. So we're going to make an f of f of a. Um, this has type, just to be explicit about this, is going to have type fwb. So what we can do is we have this what we what we have so far is we have we have an fa uh, which is a writer wrapping um, a monad of type f and it has a value of type a and we have this function that takes an a and gives us a writer t um, of type fwb so what we need to do is get the monad of type f and we're going to call flat map on that we're going to take not the outer monad, but the inner one, right? So we can do this. Um, so by calling flat map on the inner monad, we're going to be able to get the A that's inside it. Um, actually, uh, that's not all we get. We also get the log. So we can call this log WA and log A. All right, so we've successfully extracted the A and the log from the inner monad. Right. Now what we need to do is we can call the function f on the a, which gives us a new writer t. The next thing we need to take care of is appending the two logs. So we have two we have two logs now. We have the incoming log that's in the f a, and we have a any log that is part of the effect uh, that we created. You know the b. It has its own log. So we need to we need to map over this and modify the log. Right? So let's make sure we can do that. So we, we get the wrapped monad again. We map the wrapped monad. And now we can call this WB and B. And what we want to do is combine the two logs together. So we can get a monoid of type W and we can call combine and we can take the WA and the WB and that combines the two logs together and then um, sets the correct turn value which is B um, and we need to return this in a tuple so the log is the left is the first element of the tuple and the B is the second element of the tuple as a final step we need to take that um, FFA that we created. Um, in fact, it should be called FFB. Um, and wrap it up again, just like that. And there you go. So that's um, a little bit complicated, but essentially what we did is we we took um, an existing monad, uh, we wrapped it up in a data type called writer T. And then we rewrote the flat map so that it could handle the unwrapping, the application of the functions, and then the wrapping again, and combining the logs. So any other monad transformer you write also has this sort of custom code that adds the capability of the data type to the uh, to the wrapped one, right? So whatever the wrapped monad is, we're adding the capability to do logs. All right. What I'm going to do is take a program that's written using either's for error handling and then I'm going to show how we can use that with the writer team on it to add logging to a program sort of in retrospect. So there's quite a bit more to do in this video and then what we'll do in the next video is apply this uh, technique to the eval expression because um, there's going to be a bit more work to make that work too. Uh, so all right let's start with a couple of functions. Um, so we want a couple of functions that takes a pure value and returns a uh, either type 
Um, so what we'll do is make some type aliases just to make things uh, a bit easier to read and deal with. <coughs> so we're, we're going to um, be using the either data type with string in the error channel or on the left side. So we'll call that string either. And then we're going to be using a logger version of that or a writer t version of that. So we'll call that string either uh, writer, which is also going to take a parameter a. And what that's going to look like is a writer t that wraps a monad of type uh, string either. And we're going to use a list of strings as the program's log. And we're going to use a as the uh, computed value of the uh, computation. So let's make a function that just increments um, even numbers. So this is a very simple example of a function that does something with a pure value but can also fail with an error. So the, the data type, the return type is string either uh, of type int and what we want to do is say if the input number is an even number so in other words if the modulus is 2 um, then we return a right value which is going to be that number incremented otherwise uh, we're going to return a string error message so we'll just say not an even number alright so that's one example of a function uh, we want two functions together so that we can show how we can compose them using monads. All right, so we'll we'll have one that doubles only odd numbers. So double odd is going to be very similar to the other one. We're just going to take a number and we're going to say if the number is an odd number, so so the modulo two would be one. Um, then return that number doubled. Otherwise, we're going to return an error message, not a uh, odd number. Okay. So we could make a program that uses the either monad. In other words, a program that handles errors. And that program would look like this. So we're going to use a full comprehension. Um, we're going to need a uh, pure value so we can say let's take a monad of type string either and get the pure value of say 10 and then what we want to do is call a function on it increment even so we get the result of that one and increment it and then we get the result of the next one I'm going to double that. Uh, that's right. And then we can just yield the final value. So the type of that program is string either. And we can uh, probably fill that in just to make things clear. So we can run the program and you'll see that the output is um, write 22. Okay, so that's correct. Now what we'd want to do is take this program and convert it to be a program that has logging. Um, there's a few things we need to do. Um, we already have a lift function which we need because that lets us lift things from being either's to write a t's. So we can already go ahead, change the type of this to string either writer and we need to change this to be string either writer to um, we need to change this to be writer t lift which lifts it into the writer t type and Essentially, that's all we need to do to convert the original program into one with logging. 
Um, obviously we need to add some actual logging commands that add the logs in, but this is all we need to do for the actual data type. Now you can see I've got some error here, and the reason is that the type inference um, doesn't quite work correctly for um, extension methods for some reason uh, once you get past a certain level of complexity. So if you watch one of my previous videos about Scalar 2 type classes, you remember that we sometimes use an ops class to add capabilities to things. And just as a stopgap, um, I'm going to use that technique here. So I'm going to make a writer T ops uh, type F. And that's going to be a monoid. And we're going to have a W, which is a monoid. And um, take a bri private val of type FA. Um, which is going to have the type FWA. And we can use this class just to add in flat map, and this is going to give us a way to help the type system um, figure out what we're trying to do. Uh, so this has type A to write to T uh, FWB. And that returns a write to T of the same type, WB. All right, so all this needs to do is summon a monad of the correct type. So we need to do write a T um, F W A, and then we can call the flat map function. So this is actually going to call the extension method, and um, you know we'll get around the type system to make it work. Um, so that of course needs to be that. And I need to type A somewhere. So that would be there. Okay. So that's a mouthful, but that's just going to help the type system make this all work. Um, so now you see we've got less errors. And what's this one? So we have an ambiguous and um, a uh, little ambiguous implicit. So what we need to do here is help the type system again. So what we're going to do is add some type parameter to the to the lift function, and that should help us make things work. So lift needs lift needs an FWA. So FWA. So A would be integer, and we do the same for the other one. All right. So now we can run the program again. And what you should see is that the type of the program is now a writer. So we have a writer T, write, and then this empty list here is actually the log, which we didn't put anything in yet, and then we've got the return value. So we've successfully made a program with our writer T from a program that just used by this. Um, so the next thing we need to do is how do we actually do logging, right? So how do we take this program and add logging to it? Uh, we need to add some functionality to the to the write a t case class. So we're going to add a, a function called tell, which will let us um, add something to the log. Uh, so this will take something of type w. Remember, w is the type of the log, and this function is going to require that we've got a monoid of the log type. So um, let's say we we'll call it m, and it's going to be a monoid of type w. Um, we're also going to need a func door. We'll see why in a minute. So that's going to be a func a func door of type um, f, and uh, and this function returns a writer t of type f w a. Right. So in other words, um, the tell function um, is going to be able to operate on a writer t with a func door, and it's not going to change the a. 
right? We want to leave any computed value in inside this um, inside this data type. We want to leave that alone, but we want to be able to change the log. Um, so the code for this is going to be um, we're going to take the the wrapped value inside the um, data type. Right? So that's wrapped, and then we're going to map a function which takes the the log value in the function and then it combines that. So remember we have a monoid instance to combine logs. It combines that with the existing log. The existing log is going to be sorry, L2 is the existing log, L1 is going to be the new log that we passed in. Um, and then we can um, essentially that's what we need. And then we've got a squiggly here because we need to we need to make this into um, we need to wrap this up again. So we unwrapped it, we changed the value inside it, and then we wrapped it again. Uh, so let's see, I think I'm probably going to need to change the brackets here. Getting closer. Um, Alright, so let me think. So what we want inside is a tuple of the log and the return value. So that should be in here. We want to return a tuple of m and the internal value. All right, so that function lets us add a log to an effect. And we're using map because remember the whole idea of map in Functdoor is to get inside a data type that has a Functdoor instance and change the value inside it. And the value inside it is a tuple of the log and the value. Right? So we have to go through this bit of bit of extra work to make um, to make everything happen. Now, uh, tell is quite useful because you can just add any log you want. But there's another useful function we can write that I call tell with. And what tell with does is gives you um, gives the user an API where they can actually look at the value inside the effect. So um, you want to log something, but you also want to know if this computation is succeeding, let me look at that value and use that in the log. Right. So first thing we need to do is add a um, is add a function. So instead of passing in an actual log, we're going to pass in a function that converts the the value inside the log from an A to a W. So remember, A is the computed value and W is the type of the log. Then we still need the monoid, we still need the functor, and we still return a writer t. And then the only difference here is that we're going to change, instead of L1 here, we want to execute that function on the value inside the computation. OK, so tell with is going to give us the ability to add logging. So let's go and look at our program again. So what we can do is literally just call tell with, and that gives us an A. And then we can say, um, let's say we initialized with 10, or whatever the value is. And this should also be a list, because we decided our log was going to be a list of strings. All right, so now when we run this, um, we should actually see a log of the computation. All right, so we have um, we have a write value inside a writer t of a list of one log entry initialized with ten, and then the return value is twenty two. All right, each line of this computation we can annotate it with log values. So in this case, we can say we incremented it, uh, incremented two, and then that gives us the uh, a again. And then we can say, as a last step, double to. And there we go. So if you look at the return value now, you can actually see that the computation is, is succeeding with 22. And it gave us this incremental log of the things that we logged during the computation. So now what I want to do is take a look at the um, Scala 2 version of the code we've been looking at in this, uh, in this video. So in the first example, I'm going to be using Katz's uh, writer t just to show how this code looks like using that. 
So uh, we have the familiar functions here. Um, these are um, these are just returning either's like in my code. Um, and then you can see that we can uh, pretty much write the same program that I wrote. Um, you can see that the downside is that we have to provide full type annotations when we're doing our lift. Um, and also when we do our tell, we, we also need these annotations. And there are solutions to this. I'll put a link in the, uh, in the, in the video notes about um, something called partial type application, which you can use to help this. And uh, that's definitely done with the uh, CATS implementation of either T. Um, another example is this is using the CATS monad, but my own implementation of Rider T. So this is essentially not using Scala 3, it's just using Scala 2, using the um, traditional type class um, uh, implementation that we would do. And, um, you know, this code. This code works pretty well, and what I'm doing here is instead of creating either's, I'm actually my program itself is creating writers, and um, so what that means is the, the downside is the user has to know that the computed value is going to be a tuple um, because you have to include the log directly with the result. But if that makes sense for your program, you can you can do it that way, um, and then you can see that the code is very neat. Uh, we don't need we don't need excessive type annotations. Um, the compiler pretty much pretty much knows what to do, apart from uh, when we use pure here to create the initial value. One final thing I should mention is that in cats, um, lift is called lift f. In Scala Z, they call it lift m. So you have to watch out for that. And in cats, I don't see uh, an equivalent of tell with, so a way to actually do a log and look inside the value. Um, so you'll need to find another way to do that if that's how you want to write your program. So that's it for Monad Transformers. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, click the thumb and the subscribe button. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.